Hello everybody, it's Trevor G. Blake and you can find out more about what I have to say at trevorgblake.com. For those who are new to my uh, videos, these are unscripted. And I do that on purpose because otherwise you're just going to get a two-dimensional flat presentation of a preconceived notion that I want to get across, which is how most people do their stuff. And I don't. Um, I'm often asked to speak on a topic, which I am today, and the topic today is about imagination and, and how I compare what we teach at TrevorGBlake.com uh, in terms of how to use imagination compared to the works of Neville Goddard, uh, who was one of the great magis of, um, and sages of the uh, middle of last century. But often, because it's unscripted, I start in one direction with that request and I go off in a completely different direction. And I think that's really healthy because you end up with a three-dimensional or even a more-dimensional uh, discussion. Now, if you like the topic and you think it's of importance and you think that it sh this topic being aired and discussed and challenged can impact the world, then you hit the subscribe button so more people can find out about it and you give it a thumbs up. It doesn't matter whether you agree with me. It certainly doesn't matter whether you like me, I don't care. The thumbs up means interesting topic, let's talk more. If you think it's a dumb topic and no one's interested, then that deserves a thumb down. But you don't give thumb down because you don't like me or you don't agree with me. That is just childish and that drives me mad. And that's gonna make you do the thumbs down now, isn't it? No, don't, because it's important that people, if it's this is an important topic, it's important people know about it. And there's billions of people out there that don't have this conversation and don't think this way and don't talk about it. And how do I know that? Because there's only 2,755 billionaires in the world. In 2021, most people think there are a lot more than that. That's a really small number out of 7 billion people. And that's why I do what I do. That's why TrevorGBlake.com exists, because I'm not a fan of self-help and personal development as it's taught today. I'm, I'm definitely not a fan of Think, of, of think and Grow Rich and The Secret. I'm, and I'm happy to put it out there. And I would love, if, if Napoleon Hill was alive, I would love to get in a talk show with him and, and we would debate it with respect. I'd love to do that with Rhonda Burt and, and her... Uh, and the multi-level marketing team that put together uh, The Secret and called it laws based upon no scientific evidence whatsoever. You know, the, the secret to a really successful business is to find something that gets under your skin and then either fix it or create a solution if it doesn't exist. And that's why I got into this, uh, this world of personal development and coaching. And uh, what happens is uh, my digital marketing team, Brightside, who were brilliant, they'll say, we want you to talk about this and I'll give me a topic. And, and then this is what happens, an unscripted conversation that goes all over the place. So let me get myself back on track. And, and that is to talk about Neville Goddard. So I really like what Neville Goddard has to say. I've researched his background. You should always, always, always research the background of anyone that wants to give you advice. Okay, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, you know, buy a house unseen. And yet people will buy books simply because it says New York Times bestseller. And they'll buy books because it sold 300 million copies or something. You know, check the background of the author, check the background of the teacher. And you sometimes find something different. And it, even though what they, they propose and what they talk about might be of value, you get that little sense of inauthenticity. And I invite you to check my background because what we say at trevorgblake.com is something different. What's different? It's authentic. TrevorGBlake.com is where science, spirituality, and business meet, and it's where personal transformation and financial independence come together. That's what we're about. I believe there's never been a better time to reinvent yourself and achieve rapid financial independence. It's never been so easy and so accessible to everybody. And yet most people are fast asleep, they don't realize this, and they're gonna miss the opportunity, and that's one reason why I'm out there saying and doing the things that I, I do when I don't need to because I've built six companies and I've sold three for 300 million. I have to say that to get credibility. I don't care about the number. Money's just energy. It's just another form of energy. We can convert energy into anything. And Alistair Crowley, who was probably the greatest major that we've known about for 200 years, who gets a bad rap, but actually was, was, was a brilliant man. His interpretation of magic is simply the conversion of one form of energy into another form of energy. Same as Einstein said, okay? Within the laws of nature, same as Einstein said. Under the power of will, same as Einstein said. And same as I say in my own way to everybody else. So we're talking about energy and the conversion of energy. And Neville Goddard talks about this in great detail, but he uses it from a, a religious text standpoint. And he takes religious texts and he shows how it's been mistranslated and misunderstood through the ages. And that if you go back to its original uh, meaning, its original, original purpose, it gives you a completely different message. 
And the message overall that it gives is that we are our own creators and we were born to be successful and we were born to be fulfilled and we were born to be joyful and that we have all of that available. And then the mistranslations, whether deliberate or accidental from, you know, things like the original Sanskrit to where we are now, um, tell us a different story. They say the meek shall inherit the earth and that, uh, you know, money's a bad thing and, um, and we should all live in quiet guilt. And that's not the way it works. And so Neville Goddard and myself are out there saying, no, 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 no. It's the opposite of that. You have in your power, you have within you the ability to be the very best version of yourself and to make the impact in the world for which you were brought here in the first place, but which many of you may have forgotten. And I can help you remember. It's a journey to remembering at trevorgblade.com. So let's talk a little bit about energy. So, so, cause that's always the starting point. So everything in the universe is energy. It's an irrefutable scientific fact. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. Energy doesn't need you to believe in it to be energy. And energy does have laws, real laws that are, have been tested over a hundred years and, and they, they pass the scientific rigor and they also pass the math that goes with it. If there isn't a mathematical equation with some of these laws, they're not laws, they're concepts. So they might be good concepts, but be careful thinking that they're laws. You can challenge anything that's not a law, you don't have a right to. That's what we do on these YouTube videos. We are out there open discussing and debating. But it's an irrefutable fact that everything's energy and energy follows its certain laws. And one of those laws, the law of thermodynamics, is that energy can be converted. It can't be created or destroyed. It already, all the energy that can exist already exists but it can be converted into some other form, which can be an emotion, a thought, an idea, or indeed a physical representation of all of those things, which would be for me building a company that makes an impact in the world, that has a purpose. And um, energy is fascinating because energy, the, the conversion of the energy into what we consider material is all done by imagination. Nothing in the universe exists for humans except that which has been imagined first. We can't have a thought without imagining a thought first. We can't build anything without imagining what it looks like when it's built. And this now gets a little bit mind boggling. So I'm looking over the top of my laptop at a tree. And that tree has come to me as photons. So, so everything in the world is energy. Energy can be squeezed down into just 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. That's all that exists. Life is very simple. And then we can further distill it into two building blocks. They're called fermions and bosons, named after Pref Professor Fermi and Professor Bose, who discovered them or confirmed them. And so you and I and the door behind me and, and, and uh, the bow and arrow, um, which was a gift from a, a, a Cherokee chief to me back in the 90s, uh, with a command to do what I do. All of that is made out of fermions and bosons, as is the tree across there. But here's what's fascinating. Some of those fermions and bosons, or some of those fermions that are called photons, which is how we get sight, uh, shoot towards me and they go in through my eye, uh, cause an electrical charge in the optic nerve. The charge goes little electric, goes to the back of my brain, and it converts into an image. And we all learned this at high school, right? In high school biology. But we're not, we're not asked for our thoughts about that or to interpret that or what are the implications of that. Here's some of the implications of that. Where those photons are interpreted as a thing that I see is right in the back of my brain, close to the back of my skull really, in the darkest part of my brain. And my brain is enclosed inside of me and never sees the light of day. And that tree that I'm looking at it's here, not there. Out there is fermions and bosons. Some of them come in here, they get converted into an image and I get an image of a tree and I look out and I say, oh, there's a tree 50 yards away. But no, the tree is here in the back of my brain. It's in my, imagin it's in my imagination. It's how my brain interprets. It's mind boggling. It takes a bit of thinking about it. And if you want to know more about that, you'd go to trevorgblake.com and, and look at the transformation path. And uh, in transformation, we talk a lot about this and the implications and how if we change how we use our imagination and we change how we interact with that energy, we can completely change the outcomes that we experience in life. We can be a better version of ourselves. We can find our purpose again. We can become individual again and a free thinker and that we can use our understanding of energy to create anything we want.
And so we can change how our brain interprets those photons to where it doesn't look like a tree. Mind-boggling, powerful, and uh, a lot of fun. No point doing it if it's not, if it's not fun. And so we use imagination and Neville Goddard talks about how to do it. Without the science, Neville Goddard talks about how we interpret the world in terms of imagination. And that if we stop imagining things we don't want, which most of us do, right, all the time. We're thinking about things we don't want. We're thinking about viruses and we're thinking about debt and we're thinking about all these things and thinking about the fearful news headlines. We don't want that, but we think about it all the time. We're imagining it all the time. And imagination is energy and energy can only be converted into its material equivalent. And so we end up creating these things in our lives. So if we know that and we just simply change and we start to imagine things we want, like financial independence, like adventure, like travel, like a great relationship, and we focus more on imagining that and creating that here, then it gets transferred and translated out there and we get to experience it real time. And we become like magicians. We imagine our lives from this point forward. This is what we do at transformation at trevorgblake.com. And here's a more mind boggling thought that uh, Neville Goddard gave different names to because he didn't have the science because it didn't exist in the 50s, 1950s and 40s rather. And so, for a long time, there was a debate about, okay, we get that everything's fermions and bosons, it's proved mathematically, it's proved scientifically, you can't argue, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. What's in between the fermions and bosons? And, and one thought was, it's empty space, and another thought was, it's got to be connected with something, it's got to be filled with some something, some fluid or something, right, some energy. And only in 2012 was it confirmed that there is no empty space, which is important because that would mean nothing's connected but that everything is connected by an energy field which is named after the professor who confirmed the mathematics called, called Higgs. So it's now called the Higgs field. And here's what's fascinating. The Higgs field connects every fermion and boson in the universe from the very beginning of time to the very end of time if such a thing ever exists. And it connects my fermions and bosons to your fermions and bosons if I choose to make that connection. I can. It's connected, but I have to imagine connection in order to... Um, spark up your fermions and bosons. So this is really powerful and, and, and informative because it tells us that all of the universe is connected as a whole, a totality, as Helena Blavatsky said in the 1800s. One totality. Or as Alan Watts said, one suchness. These are all brilliant people who all said the same thing, but all in different ways, did, uh, according to what was acceptable at the time. They didn't create their own laws. They look for real laws. And so now we know that everything's made of fermions and bosons and the fermion bosons are connected by a thing called the Higgs field. So we're all connected and everything's connected. I'm connected to this room, to this desk, to this laptop, to the universe. And so now, and this is where we're a bit different to Neville Goddard because he didn't have this information. We now know that if we use our, our imagination in a slightly different way, a new way that's never been used before, we can create all kinds of magic in our lives and more importantly, in the lives of other people. We can have a real impact. And the way we do it is a technique that you can find in, in my course, Transformation. And it is a thing that I call time imagination or time imagination, sorry. And it's a bit of a corny title, but I'm English and the, the, uh, England is based on catchphrases. <laughs> and so I'm entitled to a couple of catchphrases. And so time imagination. And what is time imagination? We get to understand the illusion of time because the Higgs field shows us now there's no separation between the past, the present, and the future. And we know that if we change something in the present, we change both the past and the future instantaneously, not over time, but instantaneously, because our fermions and bosons are connected instantaneously through the Higgs field. And so if we crush time, and we use our imagination to create this dream of ours, this future, this impactful thing that's gonna make a difference in the world that we're gonna have fun doing, and feel purpose, and we imagine and creatively bring it into the present, then there are no limits, none whatsoever. And if you want to know more, like I say, go to trevorgblake.com and down the rabbit holes and you'll never regret it. How do I know that? Because the proof of the pudding is always in the eating of it. And remember I said there are only 2,755 billionaires in the world. Since we've been doing this uh, 18 months ago, we started uh, on this particular path um, of trevorgblake.com. 
and the we be here, here being myself and, and um, the marketing, digital marketing team, fantastic team at Brightside, uh, who are equally um, motivated to do something new and authentic in the self-help personal development field. We know that if we use our imagination in a different way, then we can have a huge impact in the world and that we can crush time and offer people a tool that's never been offered before. Offer people a way to create the lives they want away from the lives that they don't want. And therefore to have an impact, to make a positive difference in people's lives, to have fun doing it and to share in all the rewards, material and otherwise that come natural as a result. And why do I mention that? Because if you go to trevorgblink.com and you go into transformation, you'll find that we have over 2,755 spontaneous testimonials from attendees who describe in great detail how learning to use their imagination got them out of their version of quicksand, which in some cases is a terrible relationship, an abusive relationship. In others, it's being in debt up to their ears. Um, in other cases, it's just being bored and, and not feeling a purpose. And they get out of that version of quicksand and they get out of debt and they get into a great relationship and they start to build something in art or business or music or something else, even business. And they create, they find their purpose and they create their impact. Over 2,700 spontaneous testimonials saying, sometimes thank you, but also saying, this works. I've spent a fortune, they say. I spent a fortune on books and courses over the years and nothing really changed. And now I understand that the power is, in with, is within me. And now that I understand a little bit of the scientific process, and now I understand how science and spirituality and business are not separated anymore, it's freed me to make an impact. And in making an impact, I'm having fun. And when I put both of those together, I get all the rewards. Yes, you get financial independence. But just as importantly, or more importantly, you get success with balance and you get all the material, all the uh, uh, spiritual rewards that come naturally as a result of doing this. And that's what we're about. So thank you for listening again. And uh, remember, if you like this topic of conversation, whether you agree with it or not, uh, it's a thumbs up and let's hit the subscribe button and let's just keep going. Thank you.